So this is Irving from the UK. He says, thank you for giving us the opportunity to ask questions. My question is, I have been playing the lottery, asking God and affirming that I win. Are there two big requests for God? Not saying he cannot do it, but is it too big for me to receive? Do blessings come in levels? Should I be at a certain level first financially to get certain blessings? Thank you. Yes, Pastor Diola. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor, for the opportunity to be on the set again. Thank Pastor, you. I need to get the question. Is he asking whether God can make him win the lottery? Yeah, he says he's been playing the lottery and he... He's been declaring that he wins. And he wants to know, is it wrong for, I mean, he's asking God, is it, is it that his request is too big for God? Or is it too big for him to ask for? He wants to win the lottery. <laughs> um, Pastor, the, the lottery is a different system. It's a different system? Yes. Okay. Um, what do you mean, the, the a different is, system? It's, the person is uh, trying to get something by chance, by random, what you maybe luck. So um, I'm, I'm try, I don't think the two, to ask God to get into that. Okay, he's asking God to come with him into a chance activity. What? Into gambling. Uh, okay, the lottery is gambling. Okay, interesting. So I, I, I don't think that they are consistent. You don't think they are consistent? He's actually not asking whether he should do it or not. He's asking if the amount he wants to win is Yeah, so I so think that's it. <laughs> he, he's, he doesn't have any problem playing the lottery because he's been playing it. He might even be surprised that we're even discussing whether it's right or wrong. What he's saying is he wants to win. Okay. And so is, <laughs> is it too big for him to ask for? And you are saying... Why is he bringing God into this in the first place? Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm just thinking, because you're all pastors. <laughs> and, and I'm just thinking, if you won the lottery and brought you the tithe, <laughs> if you brought the tithe to the church. From the lottery. From the lottery. He brought the tithe. Would he be taken? Or would he? You haven't said, the, you haven't I'm actually said that the lottery. playing the lottery is wrong. You're questioning it, right? Or is it wrong? <laughs> but I think, <laughs> I think, um, because really looking at it from the angle of if he won the lottery, and then after winning the lottery, he, I mean. No, let's just talk about the lottery. Is, the lottery it, is it right itself. or wrong? I think maybe that's where the start from. Okay, maybe it's like saying, also, is it right or wrong? <laughs> oh, because. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me answer. <laughs> let me answer. Um, through the years, even when I was growing up, I, I knew that in the church, there was, um, we're back, uh, you know, as kids in the Assemblies of God Church um, those days. And I was um, probably eight years old somewhere. And they brought the subject to church, and the church actually warned them not to play the lottery. And um, they also had uh, um, pools betting, yes. So many were involved in those things, and, and they were asked not to do them. I've had enough time that means many years from then to now to have looked through the scriptures and understood the thinking of God's spirit with regards to these things versus our perception. Firstly, you have to understand that it's actually a game to have looked through the scriptures and understood the thinking of 
God's spirit in regards to these things versus our perception. Firstly, you have to understand that it's actually a game. And every game is a chance activity. And that is a reality. It's a game. Whether it's a game uh, of numbers or a game with your legs, your limbs, it's a game. And once you say that that's wrong, maybe the lottery, it might look so simplistic. But the reality is, what about those on the football pitch? There's no guarantee that they're going to score. They're hoping to. It's a game. And so are all other games. It's a chance. You're hoping it works. When you throw the ball, hoping it gets into that basket. You aim as much as you can. You practice it. Doesn't mean you don't have an opponent who will try to stop it. On a football pitch, you've got a, a goalkeeper there who's trying to stop your ball from coming in. So there's no guarantee that just because you've practiced so well, you're going to win the game. These are all games. And that's the way the lottery is as well. It's a game. All of them. And when you think about that, you realize that the Bible was right all the time when he said to you, the race is not to the swift. He told you. The battle is not to the strong. He told you. He told you it's never according to your ability in life. Sometimes the smartest people, the most knowledgeable people, are not the most prosperous people in the world. And yet the reason for the accumulation of that knowledge was because they wanted to have advantage in life. They wanted to be prosperous in life. And we know that there are so many of them who just can't even, they can't even take care of themselves or of their families. They don't have enough money with all of their knowledge. The most prosperous people in the world are not necessarily the brightest. So where does that leave you? So it brings all of life into the same situation where the Bible clearly tells you the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. He proved it with David and Goliath. He proved it with Solomon, to whom he gave wisdom before he could read any book. Think about it. When God says, I chose you before you were born, he directs your life in the way you should go. The problem in the world is man wanting success without God. That's emptiness. It's the biggest problem in the world today. In fact, it is the root of all the problems. That's why it tells you the love of money is the root of all evil. Why? Remember, God said, uh, Jesus said, he put two in perspective. God, mammon, Mammon representing money. He said you cannot serve God and mammon. See, the pursuit of money is the reason many people do the things they do. And why is the pursuit of money? Most of the time is to be able to control your life and maybe the lives of others. See? 
But then he tells you, God should be your love. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul. See, he wants you to love God, not love money. Love God. And when you love God, it means that your heart is after him. And then he, he directs your life from one level of favor to another. From one level of glory to another. You can't live in this world as though he doesn't exist. It's not acceptable to him. You might have been doing it, but it will not work. It will fail. Just a matter of time. And then you find your life was a work of emptiness. The pursuit of emptiness. So here's this gentleman. He says he's been playing the lottery. He wants to win. But the idea is, it's not about the lottery on his mind. It's about the money. And that's why he's saying here, he says, is it too big a request? See? So it's about, look at it. He says, um, should I be at a certain level first financially to get certain blessings? Why does he think that the only way to get such money is by the lottery? When you walk with God, you don't box him in to a particular place. He can do bigger than this for you, actually. But you don't know it. So you think the only way is through the lottery. And that's what God is in disagreement with. That's not the only way. Since it's, it's the money you want. See, um, when you play the game of football, for example, you enjoy it. Even if they didn't offer you money, you're glad that you won. You loved it. You enjoyed it. You experienced it. And then there were others who were watching this. But when it's the lottery, there's no playing anything, really. You put in stuff. What you want is the money. All right? What the other guy wants is some kind of glory, fame memory so it's all a desire so in this situation since it's money why box god in as though that's the only way he can give you this kind of money is it it's a kind of unbelief you see it it's like getting a job and asking god for a certain amount of money on that job and then god says to you why do you think that's the only way I can get this money to you. That's not the only way I can get this money to you. So just remember your purpose. Remember your actual purpose, your actual desire. It's money you want. Okay. Ask him and don't tell him how he must do it. Don't restrict him. Restricting him can be your number one limitation because you have limited God like how else we how else is he going to do it you don't trust him enough do you so there's where your faith has a problem your faith is the problem of your faith is not about the lottery your problem of your faith is the fact that you don't trust him you think this is his only way of doing it for you and that has to change. All right. Um, let me see if there's one more we can take. 